when you wrote that email to me yesterday and, and everything that you've said and all the feedback, uh, I just, I had to get you on this right away. And I appreciate you offering to do the video interview because this is something that we used to do for every new customer. We, we haven't been doing it lately and I really want to get back into it. So I really appreciate you taking the time and, you know, making yourself available. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm just so dazzled by the work, you know, I, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it takes, I've been thinking a lot about all of the different elements of what goes into a successful launch. And right. I'm sure you've heard the term agile work stream methodology. Um, I was trained, I took a course in agile methodology, which is in that, instead of iterating, you know, for months and getting right. something out, sort right. of doing it in an iterative process, right. which is what we were able to do with your team. Like right. they built something, then I reacted, then I... Right. Then they moved the content over and then I reacted. Right. And it was very efficient that way. That's you know, it great. may have seemed a little chaotic. It really wasn't because we were really organized and I was organized. So right. I don't think, we, I mean, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I think I also was <laughs> a, a, lot of, a step ahead, you know, a little yeah. bit. I knew no. exactly how I wanted it to be done. Right, right. And um, but I think the point is, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know if you guys could deliver it. I sensed that right. you could, but everyone was as nice as you were, Matt. Like I, I knew you were so nice on that first call, but you've got a team that's really nice and really capable. <laughs> I know, those, I know. Those two we're things, really lucky. Yeah, capable. You know, nice without capable is really great. Right. It's not really great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not capable, but really nice is also not really a good combination. Right. You right. have both, you know, exactly. <laughs> and everybody felt that same urgency and eagerness right. to get it launched as I did. I felt like they were at least as invested in it as me. Wow. I really appreciate that. I, I mean, it, it goes both ways though. Like you said, the, the combination of, of nice and capable, I would say the same goes for the publisher and mm -hmm. our team. You know, if um, we are both, you know, ready to go and time is of the essence, then it will go quickly. And, yeah. but you do have to be organized as you were and know what you want, you know, more than anything else. So then you can do those iterations. But, um, you know, what I was kind of thinking, I've, I've got some questions here. Maybe we could just start off a little bit more about your background and what got you into mm -hmm. launching the Red Hook Daily Catch. And then- okay. Um, you know, just talk about how the whole launch process went and what, you know, your goals are for this, uh, okay, great. You know, how, how you're approaching it, you know? So my name is Emily Sacker. Um, I was for 15 years in New York City, um, an award-winning Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter at um, a top 10 national newspaper. Um, I was on a Pulitzer Prize-winning team. I was an award-winning reporter. I was very proud of my work. And when New York Newsday, the paper I was working for, folded in 1995, I thought that was my the end of my time in journalism, like done. Right. Right. I went into other things. I went into digital publishing in other ways, and I got out of reporting entirely. Um, five years ago, just about five years ago, I moved upstate to upstate New York, about two hours north of New York City. And about a year and a half ago, I began to get involved in my local town. And I signed on with another uh, newspaper operation, a digital newspaper operation. And I just started writing stories. And I realized I still had it in me. Like I right. still had the burning desire, even though I'm in this right. little town that doesn't really have other newspapers. We were in what, what I guess we would commonly today call a news desert. There, right. had, been, there had been newspapers in our area, but um, now there was just two papers, really, the Poughkeepsie Journal and the Kingston paper, which are each about 15 miles away from us. And they would pop in and cover our little town. But long story short, I started to cover it the same way I would as a big city newspaper girl, you know, covering the meetings, right, finding right. interesting people to, whose stories I would tell, finding good issues to cover, finding national stories and looking at their local impact. Right. And little by little, I started to build up a really large archive of stories, but I wanted to break off. I wanted to become my own entity. I've always wanted to be a newspaper publisher. I've always wanted to be the editor of the paper, but a working editor, not a sit behind the desk kind of editor. Right. And I never thought it would be possible until I did a Google search one day on local publishers, local newspaper publishers, and up came your company. And I thought, okay, just for the hell of it, I'll make a call. 
Mm -hmm. or I'll send an email inquiry because I thought this was going to be like a three to four month process. And I would take a lot of time researching it and I'd really dig into the details. But just the confidence I felt after the very first phone call, you know, I asked, would it be possible to migrate 200 stories over? Oh yeah, no problem. We can do that. Would you have a slideshow feature? Because I knew I wanted to feature photography. Oh yeah, no problem. We have that. How long would this process take? Two to three weeks, most four weeks. I was like, oh my God. And what is this going to cost me? About $200 a month. I was done. That's, I was sold. <laughs> All right. And I then looked and I saw you had, you know, some other newspapers. So this was not the first time you were going to do this. Right. And I just, I went with a combination of faith and the instinct I had talking to you, Matt and Terry, that this was going to be doable. I hadn't even met your technical team. So I met your production person, your lead production person and you. And I decided, what's the risk? It's so inexpensive. Like what's the worst thing that can happen? Yep. And I took the plunge and here we are two weeks later, two weeks and four days later, and my newspaper is launched. We're out <laughs> there. We're la not only launched, we're going to publish our first newspaper newsletter today. Right. And I've launched, put out there like seven or eight new stories. Excellent. Okay. So you're feeling comfortable using it. I mean, we've got all the archives in there, but in terms of creating new stories, you feel comfortable using it. Any issues that you've come across with creating articles on the site? Well, you know, there've been a few little hiccups. I mean, I won't say there's been nothing. I would say that all of it has been in the service of learning sometimes on your side too. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I, as, as, as we moved the stories over, I knew that I needed to categorize all the stories, right? Each story that was coming over, I knew was going to dump into a new set of categories. It was coming from one ar site architecture, and I knew we were moving it into another site arc. Right. And um, unfortunately, I ended up putting the stories in too many buckets, and we had to tighten that up a little bit. And there was a little hiccup with that. We accidentally ended up assigning the stories twice to the same category. I don't really exact, but they were slightly different names. And, uh, but your team was really great about saying, you know, you know what, Emily, don't worry about it. We'll fix it. We'll figure out how to fix this. Other things I had to fix myself, you know, like I had to go in and hand code in all the bylines. Okay. So, you know, that was a couple hours of work. It was tedious but it just had to do with the fact that they weren't consistently, the bylines weren't consistent from the old site. So we had to, you couldn't run a script. You know, most of it, you guess how you ran a script, right? Right. But not everything could run a script. We're gotcha. working through a little glitch right now where the slideshows, the images are coming in too big on the page and it looks a little weird. So anyway, we're working through that issue and there's really nothing I could do to fix it. So it's something with, you know, they're going to do it in CSS or I don't know exactly how they're going to fix it. But I think my feeling is that Vera is as invested as I am in getting that fixed. She knows that it's a tool I really want to use, but I think she also sees it can be a tool other publishers can use. Wow, that's that is great feedback. I mean, <laughs> that's, you pretty much just said it all. Um, I mean, right there, but I want to break down a lot of what you said here and dig into it a little bit more. Just starting with what you just said, working with Vera and Terry very closely, as I got, I know you guys have been uh, having several meetings because you know you're so tuned into the details and uh, you know what you want. Do you feel like when you meet with us, there is like personal kind of feel where, you know, we remember you, you're not just a ticket number in a queue that some random rep is going to get assigned to you. I mean, do you feel that there's the continuity of having like a, a direct relationship with our support Absolutely. team? Absolutely. Okay. Let me talk about that. First of all, right. I know the personal stories of everybody on the team and they know mine. <laughs> yeah. like we all know each other now. Right. And you know, one of the things that's been so nice is I think we all in life want to feel understood, right? Like that's, let me take off my newspaper hat and just say that right. as a person, right. I want to be understood. Now in this context, what that means is I want the people working to get this site launched to understand that it's a passion project for me. It's not a money making project for me yet. It's a passion project. And I want them to understand how important quality is to me, right? Similarly, I want to understand what's important to them. Like they want to have their weekend 
or they are willing to work late. Like Jack who's on your technical team, obviously, right. but the audience would need to know that. Right. You know, he just went through a personal family crisis. Okay. Yes. And I'm aware of that. What I'm also aware of is that Jack really wants to get back into his work life right now. Right. Right. And he's taken on every little project. I, you know, when he, when he gets a ticket, he always just looks at it. I can tell, and he figures out, okay, I'll solve this problem, but what new thing is this bringing up for me? That uh -huh. I want to alert Emily to like, right. What proactive. am I doing here? How can I be proactive in telling right. her there's one, there's this way to solve it, but there's also this way we could solve it in the future. Right. So right. there's that. And I just cannot tell you how much the care means to me. Fact that no question I ask is viewed as like, oh my God, she really, she wants to change the color from red to, to purple, or she <laughs> wants the red to be a little darker. They don't challenge me. They just accept it. And yesterday, Vera said to me about my logo, she said, have you ever thought of animating your logo? And then she showed me, mm. and I had not, I had not mm -hmm. thought about that. We're in the mm -hmm. midst of logo design right now, but I had not thought about that, but that's a really great idea. So we're in the process now. I'm in the process now of finding a designer who can animate my logo. Nice. Okay. So you put like a have the, the hook move or something? Yeah, make the hook move and then, or, or like the end of the, the end of the implement is going to write the hook or something. I don't know exactly how it's going to go, but it's, the logo is not, the logo you're seeing is not the logo that I actually have. It's going to be really cute. Okay. Okay. Anyway, oh, or like, here's another one. They, they came up with putting a pole on the homepage. They, I said the right side looks a little bare. Okay. Right. Well, did you know we have the weather? No, I didn't know we had the weather. That's great. So they put the weather widget in. So just things like that, you know, explaining how the widget system works. It, right. it's, just, it's been such a wonderful handholding, but also when they see that I understand something and I can run with it, they let me go. Right. right? They don't hold me back. They don't say, well, no, 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 we can't do newsletters yet. You're not ready for newsletters. That's on week four. Uh -huh. You know, right, they're right. like, Okay, it's week three. We're doing newsletters this week. That's what she wants. We're doing, doing newsletters. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, you really have hit the ground running. So, I mean, I think it, it maybe it would make sense at this point to take a look at the, the page that we have on our screen. Um, Vera is sharing her screen. So she's going to give us, actually, she will follow along with what you say. So if, if you would go ahead and give us a, a tour of the homepage and, and kind of okay. how you came up with the layout and, and what's important to you on this page. Okay. So the biggest thing about this page is just contained in two areas, the nav bar up at the top here. Okay. Yep. And as you roll, well, she, she's controlling, but Vera, maybe not that one, but if you come down Vera to the next one, oh, yeah, there. So, yeah. okay, so government and politics, rolling across schools and youth, BARD and colleges, the arts, environment. And then when you get down to business and living, you'll see there's these drop downs. So right. this is the site architecture here. And, and then living similarly has a number of, of categories, right? Right. And taking the 214 stories that we have had and getting them organized, some assigned to multiple subcategories. For example, a story about an interesting professor at Bard, Bard College, which is the local college in our town, right. might be assigned to Bard and colleges, might also be assigned to personalities, right? right? Or I might do a story on electric vehicles and how they're being considered by the town, and that might go under government and politics because it's a town government issue, but it also might go under um, environment. Sure. Or it might go under business merchants, right? Because merchants right. are going to be locating these um, these technology pieces in their business. Right. So just coming up with the way of doing that and then working that through visually and graphically so that it's really easy on the user to find the content. Right. So that's right. one really important thing. And then, Vera, maybe you could scroll up a little to show the widget that we have on the front page where the stories are. So I really, really wanted to have something on the front page that would show a spool of stories, like a gallery of stories, right? These, right. This is not a slideshow itself. This is the rotating system for seeing all of the things that I've put on the homepage. Right. And we're promoting the five most recent stories. So this girl from Red Hook is going to be on Jeopardy tonight. You just cool. saw Lynn Mel Miranda, who sponsored, who promoted, um, put together Hamilton. He just gave money to Bard College. 
So we've got a lot of great stories. The school board election yesterday, the power grid went out in our town. So that was what that little icon of the little cartoon character. And then we have an art exhibition. All of these are cataloged into our topic of fresh stories, which you won't see that on the nav bar. It's it's operating in the background. And this was something that your team suggested to me as the way to get these stories up there, up onto the front, bubbling up to the top. Right. And every time a new story goes out there, the oldest one in this category rolls off and it just keeps it looking fresh. It also allows a reader who comes, oh, they're not interested in the school board, but two seconds later, oh, but that looks cool. You know, where's that? Where's that little uh, sculpture, art sculpture? Oh, Lynn mel Miranda, I recognize him. He's the Hamilton creator. What's that connection? Oh, okay, I'll I'll click on that story. So I want to give lots of options. And then of course, as you start to scroll down, we repeat some of the stories that you will see in each of these categories that I just mentioned. So we're putting, sure. spending a lot of time working on our school system, covering our schools. So that's one of the widgets here in the middle. Then to the left, we have government and politics. Oh, they just fixed this this morning. So we have Bard and colleges below that. Right. Um, and then personalities. Now this is an issue that we've had that I have to continue to think through is when I bucket my stories in two places, sometimes they're going to show up in both places. So that story right. that I just promoted about the girl from Jeopardy is in Bard and personalities. Then if we continue to scroll down, um, we see the arts, we see, um, you know, I think environment is down there next and so on. Right. And so there's a lot of things to see on the homepage, right? A lot of things. And then if you click into a category, like if we go up to the nav bar and we click into personalities, for example, right. Um, then we go to our category level pages and then you scroll down and you see the different stories that we've promoted. And these are all, you know, just in the last few weeks. So lots of stories. And you all showed me that we could have 180 days for stories. We could have 130 days, 90 days, whatever. And right. you'll notice another thing that was really important to me is I think photos really sell stories in this new digital world. Definitely. You know, people are taking photos all the time with their iPhones. Right. And imagery is just so important. I didn't want something that was super dense and heavy to look at. And I've been showing this around to younger people like your age, Matt, because I'm a next generation older and I've been asking people for feedback. And that's one of the things that people really like are that these thumbnails all have photographs. Right. So that was really, that's driving a lot of the visual design here. Right, right. No, that's great. I mean, the the way that you're creating the publication or really around the technology is is interesting to me uh because a lot of you know newspapers they will often have stories without any images you know it'll because it's a centric format you don't always need a picture in print or they don't always have one but uh you know because of the way things display on the site i mean we could have a default image there i don't know if you're aware of that but if there's ever a story that you have absolutely no picture for then the default picture would fill in there but i just don't see you doing that honestly no, with no every every story will have a photograph yeah. or right or if worse comes to worse like it's interesting you raise that because yesterday i had a tricky one we had this power outage and i thought okay what's the image going to be like i have sure. a picture of you know a generator falling apart or the power right. grid so i right. decided okay i'll go look out on and see what i can get for free that's like a cartoon of a hot person. And then I also took a screenshot of the po- of the map to show where the power outage was. Right. You know, these were not these were not photographs. They weren't and they were not scintillating images, but I was just determined. Um, you know, there we have it. You know, just, I see. And there I you see. go. So sometimes I've had to be a little creative, right? Yeah. Um, hey, you know, it was something visually interesting. Right. Sometimes I make my own graphics. I'll make a graphic on Keynote. I'll take a screenshot of it and that becomes the graphic. So for example, right. if we go to um, schools and youth and we um, scroll down on that page, you know, pretty far down, I guess, we'll look at some images of some of the, um, so that one right there, exclusive Q&A with Board of Ed candidates, our introduction. So I just made up a graphic there graphic is something I created. I took the photographs, the mug shots of each of these people, and I put some of my own graphic on it. I saved it as a JPEG and we just imported it. Right, right. right. And you know, that's something I want to say that I also really appreciate about the platform that you have here is it's able, it's extremely easy to upload and put and drop photos into stories. I'm coming from a platform where that was really time consuming, right? hard to navigate. This is like almost instantaneous. Like if you click upload, you it's drag and drop technology. You just drag it over there. 
right. click on it, decide what size you want it, and you're done. So done. You, feel, you feel it's intuitive to it's just kind really of figure it out yourself. Intuitive. Great. You know, I had been nervous, Matt and Vera, also because I had thought WordPress, I've always heard a WordPress, like that's really a hard interface, a hard content management system to work with. Uh -huh. I have found it to be really smooth, really easy. Great. Um, nothing that I've thought I wanted to do has been that hard to learn. You know, Vera has been training me and Vera sometimes will say like, did you know it could do this? And it's like, oh no, I didn't know it could do this. With, like with newsletters, you know, did you know you could make a duplicate of the newsletter you could you know, make a carbon copy that's then a template for you. Oh, right. That's cool. Okay. And I immediately think of ways I can put that to use. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. Vera and, and both Terry and Vera are so good at just, like you said, with Jack, just taking it to the next step. So you can ask a question and I've heard it so many times uh, on trainings that I've listened in on with them where, you know, yeah, they just kind of, um, you know, point out something that you weren't even thinking of yet, kind of a answer the question ahead of times. So definitely got to give them credit for um, wonderful training uh, guidance on that. Um, now, you are just a pleasure to interview. I mean, you're just making this so easy for me. But I, I want to direct you a little bit. Can we go back to that homepage? And um, I mean, you've said, so many of the things that I wanted to highlight, but let's just talk a little bit. I want to go back more to your background because, I mean, you are just like such a Renaissance woman. You know, you've done so many things. We, you know, we were just looking at your About Us page, reading about, you know, you came from journalism, but you, in journalism, you covered banking, education, New York City government, you know, you're into photography, and you were actually an educator as well, right? I mean, from the middle school all the way up to the college level. Right. That's so true. I look at this website and I just see it. It's such a beautiful example of like, I mean, it's kind of you, you know, you look at the categories at the top here and it's just like each of those categories you've spent a, a significant part of your career on. So, I mean, I guess, can you comment a little bit more on how like your whole career has has kind of led to this and, you know, how it's going to shape, you know, your goals or going forward to cover, you know, the, the community in this news desert, as you said, because it is really this, I love it when we get approached by publishers like you. I mean, they're, it's, it's definitely in the minority still, but I think it's going to be more and more publishers that are online only that are filling in these news deserts. So, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. Do you have anything to to add to well, that? I, Just like no, I'm on really, the background, I'm touched that you that you've read into that and seen that. Um, you know, I'm at a point in my career. Look, I'm 63 years old, so I was fortunate that I always planned for an active retirement, mm -hmm. and I didn't know exactly what that would look like. Right. Um, you know, I didn't know what would be the things, but. News journalism has always been in my craw. And as I said, you know, I left it for a long time. And the other piece of my life that is not even visual here is that I'm an art historian. I went back to school in my late 40s and early 50s, and I got my master's degree and did some work on my PhD in art history. And I now have a career, actually, a business, a second business in addition to this, giving art tours to a very bespoke uh, custom clientele in the city. So I have a celebrity clientele, right. um, both celebrities Ooh. and high net worth individuals, uh -huh. but also just young kids, you know, so it's a really interesting mix. And I do that kind of on the weekends, but sometimes during the week. So I guess what I feel like is that everything I do, I do with, with passion and a commitment to quality. And right. that means getting really into the deep tissue details of whatever I'm doing. That's why I'm building this site right now by myself. I don't have somebody else doing it for me. I don't have right. like the publisher who's handing it off. Right, right. Absolutely. To a junior person. Like I yeah. have a vision for what I want this to be. And I think that it's in terms of this particular project, I want to service a small town. And I'm still learning myself what that's actually going to look like, right? Because right. when you're a reporter for a top 10 newspaper, okay, Newsday yep. had a circulation of 650,000 readers, right? right. In, in New York City, I think our circulation was about 250,000, something like that. I might have that those right. numbers slightly off. But, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are reading the newspaper. And 
you know, yes, I cared what people thought, but I had a responsibility primarily to the newspaper, um, meaning to my editors, right? This is a little different. This is, I also have a responsibility to individuals who make up the town of Red Hook. And people know who I am, right? Like I walk down the street, people know who I am. They know I'm writing. They know I'm the new crazy journalist in town. You know, it's very different from walking into a a meeting in New York Newsday 30 years ago or 25 years ago where the connection to the individuals is not really what I'm working towards. And this is a very different project. And I suspect I'm going to make mistakes, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like, do I want to do investigative journalism? I don't know yet. That's kind of how I made my name at Newsday, database right. reporting and you know all that kind of stuff. I mean, I was right. really into these big stories where digging up dirt sometimes, right? I don't know sure. if this is what I don't know if that's what this is going to be. So when you look at the site architecture, I don't know if you're seeing so much a reflection of me as what you're seeing. I hope what you're seeing is my vision for what we should cover. I see. My vision for what's important. So for example, if you go to business and you go to agribusiness as a subset right now under business at the right-hand side there, and you go to agribusiness, right? Mm -hmm. There's very little there yet, right? Mm -hmm. A couple stories, you know, maybe three, I don't know, but I want there to be 20, right? I want there to be See, that's the end of it. Okay. Like right. that, that's all I've got right now. Those four right. stories. Right. So, but we live in a, a rural community with a lot of farming. We have milk farming, cow farming, and we have bull farming. We have dairy, you know, all kinds of things. And we have what are called community supported agriculture. So the community is helping support the business there. And right. I need to really get into that. You know, that's something I haven't covered yet. So right. that's aspirational. So the site is both, um, where it is today, but it's also an aspirational site. It's what I want it to become, right? Right. And you'll notice right now, and this is something, Matt, I know you and I talked about, that there's no advertising on the site, right? Right. So we're aiming this to be a nonprofit. So I really want to sell advertising, but I don't want to be beholden to any advertisers. Yeah. I also envision um, getting grant money, you know, right. getting applying for grants. So this is a new direction in journalism, community right. supported journalism, grant supported local journalism. But just, I know you broached with me the idea of supporting and getting someone to sponsor the newsletter. And I'm already, I want to get the newsletter out so I can show it to some people who I think might be interested in sponsoring it, right? right. So right. that's something, you know, I've never had to think about the money side of the business. When you're a journalist, you're going out, you're doing your stories, you're trying to get on the front page. Right. That's your job, right? Like I'm not the publisher. I'm not the person who's out selling advertising. Mm. But right now I have to wear that hat too. And that's right. a, new, a new hat for me to be wearing. Right. Um, well, know, go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, you know, but fortunately this is a, a second or even a third career for me. And I yeah. have, I mentioned this on my call with you you know, I'm in a financial situation where this can be my passion project. And right. if I never make a nickel on it, it's not going to die for lack of money. And that's in part because you've made it affordable. This is something I can afford to do with other income streams that I have. So $230 a month or whatever I'm paying in fees to your company mm-hmm. is a small drop in the bucket for me to be providing a service to this community, Right. Right. Well, I wanted to bring that up, actually, because, yes, we definitely try to keep things affordable um, for you to have a site that you own. It, it's uh, your content. It's all your property. And you control the communication, your audience through the newsletter because you're collecting emails and you know, then you can directly uh, reach out to them. And I I just like to point this out because, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you could have gone with this. There's many different platforms. You could have set up your own WordPress site. You could have set up a a Tumblr site. You could have just set up a page on Facebook. But I have my own reasons for why publishers should avoid those options. Uh, Number one being uh, Facebook owns all that content you put out there, and then they control who sees it. So you're really kind of, uh, you know, at the whim of their algorithm. But I mean, are there any other things that you considered and, and, you know, that ruled out as, you know, not a good way to to get the news out there and decided to go with a platform that you would actually own and fully control? 
Right. So I'm really glad you brought that up um, because without talking you know, in detail about the platform I left, um, so I left that platform because their business model was a for-profit model. And I, I don't think that that's viable in this market that I'm in. Okay. And I didn't, I wanted to be, I wanted to extricate myself from that pressure. Right. And, I, and I wanted to be able to opt into the idea of grant funding because right. I, I had been investigating that. So that was one thing that would be possible by leaving that other option, right? right I right. wanted an option that had a lot of bells and whistles, but bells and whistles that would be um, very accessible for me to use. So for example, I wanted that photo gallery. That was really important. And I knew that you could supply that. Um, I wanted to be able to dispatch the newsletters myself. I wanted that to be an automated, as automated as it could possibly be. So I wasn't, right. because I came from a platform where we were building it on one platform and then we were using MailChimp. So which meant we had to recreate the content each week or not recreate the content, but you know, recreate the newsletter each week. It wasn't, sure. whereas this, this platform, it's integrated. So the, right. the newsletter is integrated with the content production. That, right. that was really important to me when you told me you could do that. Um, I am not a Facebook fan. I, I had a relationship with Facebook, you know, back in the day, <laughs> and I have mm -hmm. not put anything on Facebook in two years. Yeah. So, you know, that has to do with the politics of the way Facebook has operated. I don't trust Facebook. I don't like right. Facebook as a concept. Mm. Um, I did not want them to obviously own my content. Mm -hmm. And I also don't like the way they display the content. So I mm -hmm. wanted it to look like a really rich news site, right? I right. didn't want it to look like just a bunch of screaming stuff. And I didn't want it to be populated by a lot of advertising. Mm -hmm. So Facebook yep. was not, I did think about Facebook, but I not, not very seriously. Right. I think your, your underlying question, I, I knew I wanted to be a WordPress site. I mean, I'd done a, enough digging in to know that WordPress is the way I was going to go. I did not want to build it from scratch. I, there was no way like Again, the two hundred dollars a month is worth it to a have the technical support. I like I don't want to be doing it alone. I want right. the support. I right. want somebody who's working till eleven twenty at night who can figure out why <laughs> the colors on the website aren't right or why the photo I just thought I published didn't get out there. I don't want to be right. figuring it out. Like I'm doing enough figuring of it out to exactly want to be. And I want that. I want a camaraderie to be honest because I don't have a staff yet. Right. It, you guys are kind of my partners, right? Yeah, like, you're absolutely. My friends. You've become my friends in this venture. <laughs> oh, thank you. In this venture, so you are my friends. You're my support. We and feel the, the same. People. Well, it's really part of that. You know, I want, I know that Vera's there for me. I know that Terry's there for me. I know Jack's there for me. It makes me feel really supported. Because, <laughs> oh, good. You know, I can look like I know what I'm doing and I'm glad if it looks that way, but there's a lot of, you know, agita and stress in doing right. it, especially right. doing it as quickly as we've done it, right. right? But every step of the way, I've been calmed by the tone of your team, by their care. I just can't emphasize it enough. This is not just a technical project, right? right. This yep. is more than that. This is right. really important. Right. And I, yeah, I can definitely um, appreciate what you said about, I mean, you, you have enough to deal with, to figure out the model, kind of set up the architecture so that you can grow into this. And I want to get into your long-term plans for workflow and, and so on a little bit more without uh, going into the details on the, the previous publication. We don't, right, right. won't mention them. It, right. Let's just leave it as uh, they were a user-generated uh, publication. That's so, correct. Yeah. So, you, and that you, was another thing. I'm glad you mentioned that, Matt, because there were several reasons that I wanted to move into my own thing. I don't. I didn't want user generated content. I really trust only myself and people who are working for me, um, who I can shape and mold. So, the goals of the site are both to provide content to the people of Red Hook that are either things that are actually happening in our town or things that will matter to people in our town. So it might be something that's happening 30 miles away, but it's directly relevant to our town. The second thing is to train young journalists. And because there are people who still want to do journalism, right? It's really hard now, the, the number of newspapers that can mentor these people. Like I started out at a little newspaper, very much like the one I'm going to run, right? right. Small newspaper that actually is a feeder newspaper to the New York Times. 
circulation mm-hmm. about 30,000. So, you know, we did have circulation, but we didn't have a lot of it, right? And I want to be that person. I'm in a position to be a mentor to some young journalist. When I think about the future, what I think about is that we will generate either through advertising and for sponsorships or through grant funding. We will generate a small amount, enough to support first one journalist. And my goal is eventually you know, two or maybe three. And as we grow, which I hope will happen slowly and mm-hmm. methodically and strategically mm-hmm. and tactically, we will move into relevant related communities in our area. So my goal is not to be mm-hmm. the Hudson River Valley newspaper. It, that's mm-hmm. not what I'm after here. Mm-hmm. I want to be a really good newspaper for Red Hook, which is mm-hmm. not the Red Hook of Brooklyn. This is Red Hook, New York. Right. I think then our next obvious town will be Rhinebeck, the town that your viewers may know. It was where Hillary Clinton's daughter got married. So mm-hmm. it's an upscale town, again, about two hours north of New York. We're not far from Woodstock, New York, the site of the great mu- yeah. music festival, right? Uh-huh. So this is, these are the communities in and around Red Hook, right? Right. So I want to grow little by little, carefully and strategically to cover more town. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's that's like your your big picture vision. And I I would like to just as a side note, we didn't talk about this too much, but we work with a a publisher out in the Cleveland area, and he's got a very similar model. And when he came on board, he you know needed the ability for people to sign up for a membership is kind of what we call it. It, it, but basically it's a free thing that you can sign up for as a writer. You create an account on the website and then you can submit your stories through a form and they go into the CMS for him to approve and publish on the website. So that's what I, I would recommend you you consider trying because it would just yeah. you know take some of the work uh, so like you don't have to just receive it through email and then copy and paste it onto the website we could just get it right in there it already be formatted so is that kind of what you're picturing uh, eventually as you expand and well as you uh expand your coverage of these communities in this you know yeah. this hyper local would you have people submitting things or would they so be that's like, interesting yeah. yeah what i i really I hate to say it, but I really don't envision citizen-generated journalism. I feel like that's okay. what Facebook does. Right. Um, right. I really want to control the quality of this thing. And I think that's a different animal. That's actually what the predecessor that I left is doing. And I all, you know, hats off to them, you know, for being right. able to get people interested and in giving people a platform. Now, there are a couple of places where people can um, submit, like memoirs. So I have a memoir section. It's under living. Mm-hmm. And I have a number of memoirs there. So if people have memoir writing, short stories that they're writing, that's a place. But in terms of covering town government, I don't want stuff on here that's either opinionated or right. that's coming across as news journalism that's really not. So if you right. have a letter to the editor, we have a place on the mm-hmm. top there to submit letters to the editor. We don't have a place to publish them yet, but once we have a density of them, we will add that to our navigation or we will put a button on the, you know, somewhere on the page so people can read those letters to the editor. Okay. And, you know, maybe this is something I would do eventually, but I haven't found it difficult to get, you know, seven to 10 original stories a week with Mm -hmm. just myself. Like I'm a facile writer, (laughs) an editor and journalist for a long time. You know, I, I'm, I'm working fairly rapidly. Um, and I'm going to start, as I said, we have one journalist who's already working with us. So I already feel like I've got the power of two going right. with us. Right. Um, so assuming I can continue to pay him you know, some kind of fee, he's going to cover some of the trend stories. We have a big issue with short-term rentals, Airbnb in our community that's surfacing now. So he's mm-hmm. going to cover that issue for us. Interesting. So I'll be able to pull back. Right, and, right. You know. That's amazing. Yeah, these, this type of stuff, you know, so many issues being created by these like that's a technology company to me airbnb and uh you know the the things that issues that they're creating in small communities are not being covered in any substantial way you really need that investigative uh kind of hat that you would wear and it it would never be covered in any sufficient way on facebook so or, or you know any kind of online uh platform like that so um and that's interesting. Are you 
paying uh, just curious, like per article or how do you work yeah, that out with that? Right now I'm paying, a, I'm going to pay a contract rate per mm-hmm. article. Okay. Um, Got it. So yeah, you know, one of the things that I think is going to be a big challenge for me in the next few weeks that I'm going to be thinking a lot about, and I, I'm really interested in your feedback and ideas is how to grow this newsletter list. Because I see that, you know, people don't go necessarily to the website. It's you got to push content out to them. Right. And um, that's what I think the newsletter will do. Right. And I really want to incite and, and motivate people to share the newsletter. So I, I have to think about some ways that I can, what can I offer them if they right. get three people to sign up, if they get five people to sign up, do I send them a baseball hat? <laughs> like, I see. Interesting. I don't know. You know, that's right. Because I think to prove the model, I've got, you know, hundreds of subscribers, but I want to have thousands. And I know that they say that in a small town, if you get 30% of the people to opt into reading and caring about local journalism, so that would mean 3,000 readers in a town of 11,000. Right. You know, plus we have Bard College, there might be some people there. So I need to really learn about the techniques to build that newsletter base. Right, right. Yeah, you know, that's definitely something I would want to cover in probably in meeting. a dedicated meeting. Yeah, because there's yeah. a lot that we can do there. I, I mean, you know, and we, we have been kind of putting down, uh, you know, so, the social media platforms. But I mean, that would be one thing that I would, you know, suggest thinking about at least to, you know, not putting your stories out there, but putting links to your stories. Exactly. And, you exactly. Know, and then exactly. driving people to the site. That's the goal. We're using Facebook to as a marketing tool or Twitter, um, and we can automate the publishing to those platforms. So it doesn't take you extra time to copy and paste the links. Um, you know, that's through the social media auto post. So, you know, there's things like that. Okay. But- so that's a perfect example. Like, I don't know about that yet. I have okay, yeah, questions, yeah. but we need to do that. Cause it's not that I, I don't want to publish to my own site, but there's a site I have permission to post on called Red Hook okay. Daily Happenings. They already have 5,000 people that are members of that site. So perfect. instead of creating a, a, a shadow site of the Red right. Hook Daily Catch, and right. building the traffic, I want to just post right out to their website. Right, right. That's right, great. I mean, right out to their Facebook page. And right, I don't right. know what we do with Twitter. You know, like, but these are some things where I have learning. I have a lot to learn. And that's another thing I want to say about this is I love to learn. I love to learn about content uh, management. We systems. can tell. Yeah. I yeah, really do. I, I like to be on the cutting edge, you know. Right. I don't know if I'm on the cutting edge, but I like to think I am. <laughs> right. You know? uh, no, I can tell you, you are. I mean, this is like I said, kind of at the beginning, the news deserts that are the kind of inevitable result of the economics affecting local journalism today. Like that's going to continue to shake out and we're going to see more and more publishers like you. But you are in the minority right now in, in terms of being really a one person operation with a contractor helping out. But um you know, this, I think, is the future. I mean, uh, unfortunately, a lot of local newspapers, they're a little bit um, too heavy. You know, they, they just, they, they have an office, they have all this equipment that they've got to maintain, you know, rather than just being a completely virtual operation, which is totally possible now, even if you were still creating a print edition, that's still possible. But they are, they haven't adapted and they haven't let go of the legacy uh, insti- you know, just systems, you know, that, yeah. um, were in yeah. place that, you know, made sense 50 years ago, but even like 20 years ago, these things stopped making sense and it's still taken people a long time, uh, to adapt. Um, so I think it's in, in a weird way, starting completely fresh with, uh, just a website is, is really kind of like a clean slate in a way that you can't get from yeah. coming from a, a print operation. You know, we do our best to try to encourage publishers to cut the fat, but you know, they they still have that office in town and and they don't want to let that go. And I, I mean, there's there's some benefit I think to having the real estate, but it's only if uh, you know you are going to be like a physical presence at so many things. I, I am I'm picturing like these government meetings, um, things to uh, events at the college, you will be there representing Red Hook, right? The Red Hook Daily Catch, and you'll be promoting it kind of organically that way. Is that how you see 
Yeah, I think it's going to, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I'm there and I put my name and I put, I, I need to update my, you know, whatever it says is under my name um, for Zoom. LinkedIn. A lot of the meetings are, oh, well, right. no, yeah, that's uh, Zoom. I, I, I do need to, up, I'm glad you mentioned, I do need to update my LinkedIn, right? right. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of interest in what I'm doing in the town already. People are awesome. really excited about it. And awesome. People, it you know, makes people feel good. It's kind of a vanity play for the town. Like the real estate agents are excited about it. I'm hoping one of them mm -hmm. is going to sponsor the newsletter, actually. Okay. Uh, you know, this has been also like an amazing time. Like I look at what's done well right now during COVID is our market is just 30%, 30 to 35% increase in home sales, right? So the real estate agencies are doing so well right now. <laughs> like they need to sponsor what we're yeah. doing. You need to right. really make this happen. Right. Like right. for them, giving five thousand dollars to the newsletter is right. nothing. That's like right. you know what they made in an afternoon yesterday. Right. Right. They, right. Can, they can do that. So sure. You know, it, it's a, it's it's yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity here for you. And uh I mean the can't believe um we've almost been talking for an hour already. I, I don't wanna leave Terry and Vera out. I have just like one more kind of big picture question, but do either of you want to jump in? Um, I don't want to, you know, leave you guys out. Do you have any questions? I didn't even know they were there. I would have been talking about them. Oh more. yeah. Well you, I'm They've sorry. Been, I mean, okay. Hi, Terry. I mean, I, Terry, I feel like I, I get very teary when I talk about Terry, Terry <laughs> and Terry, because and you know, Vera too, you know, I said to them yesterday, I don't really know the difference between what they do so much, but you know, Terry has taken such a personal interest in solving some of these problems. I think I mentioned this thing with the slideshow yesterday. Right. And it also makes me feel really good when I do something. Like she said, wow, you solved that problem. Like that makes me feel really great because I'm just uh -huh. learning. I'm just learning and I'm building my yeah. confidence working in this system. Yeah. But with the slideshow, like, I don't know if she's resolved it yet, but she knows that we need to figure out how to make the slideshows a little tighter on the page. So they're not right. taking so much space. Right. And she's taken that on as her own personal project, right? She does. So that's just yeah. an example. It's a small but really important example because as you can see, slight, well, maybe you can't see, but if you go to the art section of our, maybe Vera can navigate to that. If you go to the art section of our site and then you scroll down on that page, on that category page under the arts, um, there's a slideshow where the, the things are just coming in too big. But we, we figured out some of it and that's been really amazing. Or the other day, she wanted me to learn how to use forms so that people could send an idea. So when now when you click on my send an idea link up at the very top nav, you can pop it populates a form that people can fill in like their name, their email, and then they can send their form idea. And it just it just makes it a little more fun than just a regular email. It's a form. And I know there's right. other things we can do with the forms. Like we can have people vote on their picture of the week. You know, I don't know, right. like, we're going to have all kinds of stuff where it's going to be very engaging and engaged. And so the right. ideas that Vera and, and Terry have thrown out on the production side have been really fantastic. Well, and then good. Jack and James, you know, they're, they're, I yeah, don't, James. Jack and James, I mean, yep. Jack and Jill, Jack and James. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know James as well, but Jack is just such a nice person. I can just feel his kindness in everything he does. Am uh, I right? Well, yeah, no, I mean, I see all his response. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, Terry. Go ahead. I know you have uh, something, a lot to say about Jack. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, she's absolutely right. Jack is just the greatest guy. We are so very fortunate to have him as part of our team. He is just amazing. And then I said yesterday, like, I wanted to send flowers to the office. And then I said, Are you guys in one place? No, they're at you guys are spread all over the place. Right. So that's something that's also seamless and not vis not visible at all. Okay. Great customer. Right. You know, I don't think it matters anymore. Who cares where you guys are? Right. I don't, I don't, I personally don't care if you're in an office, but I think the fact that there is such a team feeling, right. Like I'm part of the team, but also your team, the team you've right. hired, the team that you have working together. Right. They're organically connected to each other. Right. And it, it shows, it shows in the work that's coming out, you know? I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, really, it's weird how this whole shutdown has forced people to zo use zoom and other screen sharing things. And it's 
brought our company together more than it was before because we were, I, I mean, we were coordinated because we had a single ticket system. So you just have one email you send it to. And sometimes you hear back from Terry, other times from Jack. And that always existed. But, you know, we're just doing a lot more face-to-face and face-to-face with publishers too, like on this yeah. and uh, actually seeing what people look like. We never used to do that. I, I didn't know what half of our customers even look like and same, mm-hmm. they didn't know what I look like. And so now we're doing um, so many more interviews and these publisher interviews. And I'm definitely planning, um, I'm going to put in my calendar a reminder for maybe six months, maybe even sooner to circle back with you. And, you know, if you're available to just do another one of these and just check in oh, on the sure. progress because I can see you're moving very quickly and you're just like such a perfect uh, example of what is possible on WordPress because you know nothing is just gonna work you know automatically you got to put the time you got to have the vision and you know you got to be a creative person but this platform is so flexible and very powerful if you know what you want and you're, you know, ready to take action and actually implement right. your ideas. Right. Yes, it's, it, that's exactly right. And Matt, I don't know, you know, are you the president of the company, the top salesperson for the company? I don't even well, know what your role yeah, is. Yeah, I'll tell you a, a little bit of my background. Yeah, I mean, th- this company, I, I guess I didn't mention it on our first call, but we were founded in 1997, and mm-hmm. it's a family business. So right. my father and mother ran it for 24 years Um, And and in the last few years, my father started to step away. He's the chairman now. And so I was appointed the CEO. uh, It's almost three years ago now. Um, But before that, I was in the sales and marketing division. So I hope, uh, you know, that is, um, you know, part of the inspiration. Terry, you know, is very close with my mother. They, they work together constantly. So there's, there's kind of a family feel there. And yeah, I I think that's where the, the caring culture kind of stems from, but I mean, we, it's, it's not going to work if you don't have the right people that don't, you know, actually uh, care, um, you know, just kind of inherently. So uh, the people that have stuck around and, you know, um, have been with us for the the last few years, at least, and, and really make up the core team like Terry and Vera and Jack uh, and, and certainly James, um, you know, they, I think it's just a matter of like the right environment for the right person, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's not just the company. It's, it's really finding the right people. And, um, but yeah, this is, this is my, this is going to be my career, you know, I, baby. for sure. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, like I said, it's really my father's baby, but um, for the past 12 years, I, I was working with him and, you know, learning everything I could from him. He was really an engineer at heart mm-hmm. uh, and he wanted to be like this dynamo salesperson. And uh, I like to think that my background in theater and the arts and performing has really helped me fill that part of the company out because I am not a programmer. So that is not my strength, but I can, you know, do a lot of webinars and I love doing webinars and I love talking to publishers. So, uh, and, and the FaceTime, I, I really enjoy. So, um, yeah, I, I really appreciate all your feedback on just the, the personality behind it. Cause yeah, it's like for us, the, the way things are going in the world of technology, it's like, it's, it's almost like going in the wrong direction. It's going so much towards self-service and it's all about the tools, but you are just completely disconnected from the support team. Uh, you know, they're often in another country and they, they don't really have the same passion uh, for the job or, uh, you know, for the mission, you know, and supporting local journalism. I mean, you can't. I was just going to say that. If I can jump in, I'm just dying yeah. to say that. I think the key thing that makes our team work is that we have deep passion for local journalism. We all know what we would like to see. We all know what needs to be covered, the stories that need to be told. And when we come across a publisher who wants to do that, and all of them do, really, we just, we feed off of that, and then we feed each other, and it's just this dynamic process that just grows, and that's what's kind of glued us all together, and I think that's what you feel, mm-hmm. um, is our path. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, I'm really glad you mentioned that, Terry, because I'm sure there are other WordPress publishers 
or WordPress, whatever you, I don't know, content management systems out there that I could have found. But I wanted to be with one that was publisher focused, right? And that would work with publishers, not just people building, you know, music websites, right? Like, right. This is a specific use case, right? Right. Specific (laughs) function and purpose. Right. And it takes the right team to, to understand that. And you guys do, you know, we all speak the same language kind of. Well, yeah, you just said it. You kind of answered my last question because earlier, I, I really appreciate what you said about how our first meeting allowed you to feel like you could take the leap now instead of waiting and, you know, uh, milling around the, the decision. But um, also just, well, how do I want to say this? Um, the way that we position ourselves is definitely to be focused on newspapers. I mean, we've had plenty of opportunities to design websites for local businesses, like through our affiliation with the newspapers, but we didn't want to be a jack of all trades. You know, we want to be a master of one. So I mean, you talked about taking the leap now because of, uh, you know, having a good conversation with Terry and I, um, I hope I'm wondering, is it also the fact that we only work with newspapers that kind of made you feel more comfortable? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I knew enough to know exactly what your uh, basket of clients was. Sure. I knew that you had a lot of newspaper clients um, gotcha. and that, or, you know, readers or papers, you know, I knew you did. Um, since I signed on with you, I know there's another company that works primarily with nonprofit newspapers and I don't, you probably know who they are. I've come across them through grant funding opportunities I'm looking at with the American Journalism Project. So okay. when I looked at who they were funding, this is a little deep, more deeply into it. I discovered there's another company that's also doing this. But, you know, then I said, well, am I sorry that I signed up with the one I did? And it's like, no, because in two weeks, we got this thing out the door. I just know that would not have happened anywhere else. I I can tell. <laughs> I would have said, no, we can't import all the stories. or And then I would have gotten frustrated. And, you know, so I don't know. I'm so pleased. I'm just, sometimes I'm impetuous and I feel like maybe this was an impetuous decision. I mean, remember you talked to me and like five minutes later, I signed the paperwork. Right. I was right. like, you next, did. The you next did. hour. That was, hour that was a record. Later. I gotta say that. That was a record. That was a record, right? <laughs> In less than a few hours from our first meeting, you were a customer. That was really I had remarkable. It, right? I signed <laughs> it and I got all the paper, you know, I did it all digitally. Like I downloaded yep. it. I signed it on preview. Boom. Right. Back. Right. You didn't have to print it off. Right. <laughs> right. And all you had to do is tell me, oh, we have to have you sign in one place you forgot, you know? Right. Um, but I knew that so many paper places was going to be paper centric and blah, blah, blah. you know, it just, right. yeah, no, it's, it's just been a pleasure, a total pleasure. Well, it's same here, same here on this side, universally. I mean, we, we have our weekly meeting uh, with our whole team. Everyone's there, Jack and James. And, um, you know, we, we were just all saying a pleasure. It's been working with you. There have been some interesting, uh, unique right. things about your publication being nonprofit that we're going to continue to to work through. I've heard, you know, uh, just to kind of um, maybe get. So I, I think that's that's pretty much it for our interview. And I, I know we've talked for an hour and a half here. So if you got to go, um, let well, me know. But that's fine. I just got. I want to read all the emails that I know have come in from your team. <laughs>